The Elite Eight, a time for elite players to lead. Ed Cota is North Carolina's coach on the floor, but the Tar Heel fans would willingly assign him an even more important role. He led his team past the top seed, Stanford, and into today's South Regional Final. They will meet the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes' force of nature, Eric Coley. He carries his team on his shoulders. Today, he could carry them to the Final Four. There is a never-say-die design to Florida's attack, and Mike Miller embodies that approach. He beat Butler at the buzzer, and he led the Gators past top seed Duke. The Gators face the Oklahoma State Cowboys, and their man at the reins is Desmond Mason. The senior studies art in the classroom. He creates it on the basketball court. Unique talents all on display in the South and East Regional Finals today. The Road to the Final Four, presented by Holiday Inn Hotels and Resorts. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Dumble in New York. Welcome to CBS Sports' continuing coverage of the Road to the Final Four. Wisconsin and Michigan State earned this year's first two Final Four berths yesterday. Today, we will ticket the winners from the South and the East brackets for next Saturday's national semifinals in Indianapolis. With half an hour to tip time, the road to the Final Four is live in Austin, Texas, where number eight North Carolina will battle number seven Tulsa. The surprise of Tar Heels have rallied behind the leadership and extraordinary passing skills of senior guard Ed Cota, who's looking for his third Final Four trip in four years. The Category five Golden Hurricane have a senior leader of their own. Forward Eric Coley can shoot, rebound, and he led the nation with 121 steals this season. Then at 5 Eastern, we will go up to Syracuse, New York for the East Regional Final, a battle between number five Florida, conquerors of top seeded Duke, and number three Oklahoma State. They call it Billy Ball for head coach Billy Donovan. Keep it fast, use the bench, wear them down, and that's just what the Gators did to top seeded Duke. With four senior starters and superstar Desmond Mason, the Cowboys are driving toward their sixth trip to the Final Four. And I am joined today by my partner, the Lord of Locker Room Linguistics, Clark <laughs> Kellogg, and by our special guest, former Georgia Tech coach Bobby Cremens. The challenge today is for either of these games to live up to what we had on the air here yesterday. And I think that's very capable of happening, Greg. Unlike the tournament to this point, I think both games have the potential to be just as close as the respective seedings are in these two matchups. And looking ahead to the Oklahoma State game, they've got inside and outside balance, and they also have tremendous experience. Six of their eight guys in their playing rotation are seniors, and because of that, I think they will present a two-by-four challenge to Florida. Stiff and thick challenge for Florida. All yeah. right, now, I don't know if there's any such thing as darling coaches of the tournament, but if there is a darling, it probably would be Billy Donovan of Florida. Greg, Billy loves to press, pressure defense. However, late in the game against Duke, down four, he went to the zone. The Cowboys will attack his pressure. I believe he'll utilize the same strategy. Uh, if Billy's watching, I didn't really mean to call him darling. <laughs> As North Carolina and Tulsa continue their pregame preparations, let's take you to Austin and get the latest on this matchup from the men who will call the game for you, Dick Enberg and James Worthy. Thank you, Greg. In the land of the Longhorns on this Sunday for the South Regional, a game that uh, has David and Goliath proportions, in, especially in terms of the tradition of these two teams in the tournament. First time ever the University of Tulsa has made it to the Final Eight, where Carolina's been here 20 times, 14 trips to the Final Four, three national titles, and four other runners-up. Well, when you look at the numbers of history, Carolina definitely has the edge, but a lot of those players in the history aren't here this afternoon and the way Tulsa plays defense they may be able to equal this game out. Well there are other David and Goliath proportions that applies to size certainly in biblical terms and to today's game. It's a very short hurricane team. Look at North Carolina. A sizable height advantage at every starting position. Well both teams have to utilize their strengths. Tulsa must play good on the perimeter with their defense and North Carolina must pound the ball inside. They have two big players and Brendan Haywood and Chris Lang who must 
produce. North Carolina leading the nation in field goal percentage, and they must continue to do just what you see on the screen with Haywood. But I think the player that must step up, he's been playing pretty good so far, but Chris Lang must take advantage of the smaller players. He may be matched up with Eric Cole. He must take him inside and dominate. Well, let's go back to New York, our own uh, David and Goliath, and beware, Clark Kellogg, Gumbel's got rocks in his pocket. <laughs> Dick! <laughs> <laughs> they're soft rocks. Yeah, they're small. Thank though. you, bunch. Yeah, North Carolina. Uh, do you buy this David and Goliath thing? Not really, because I like the fact that this is a contrasting style matchup size versus speed. It's the classic matchup, and I typically tend to, if you can't have both size and speed, I would err on the side of speed, and that's what Tulsa has to utilize. Full throttle for 40 minutes and try to wear down, I think, the bigger um, North Carolina squad. That's our ongoing behind-the-scenes argument. We'll <laughs> pick it up later. In the regional final doubleheader played yesterday in Albuquerque and Auburn Hills, three of the four teams came from the Big Ten Conference. Two of them have advanced to Indianapolis. Let's check out Wisconsin and Purdue. The Badgers looking for a Final Four berth for the first time since 41 after trailing. We get to the Final Four. And uh, the game just didn't unfold right at the end, and, and uh, the coach got a little frustrated, and I apologized to our team for that. And um, There's a lot of guys crying in there, and they shouldn't be crying. They, they have a lot to be proud of. It was a monumental game. It was an awfully tough game, and I think Michigan State showed just how tough they can be when it's crunch time. Well, they've been able to come from behind on countless occasions this year, and it points to their heart and their talent as well as their determination and physicalness. As we watch Larry Eustace lose control in the final moments of that game, Coach, you've been in the Final Four. Can you identify with it? Uh, absolutely, Greg. I'm so proud of him apologizing. Uh, you hate to see one incident ruin a great coaching game yesterday and throughout his entire season. I also like uh, Dick Bennett expressing his sentiments for Gene Cady and Gene telling all of us that, you know, getting to the Final Four is not the means to the end. Um, he's a great coach and maybe he'll get there someday. You are such a good guy, Coach, now that your coaching <laughs> days are done. You know that? <laughs> a reminder, get free access to top stories, sports stickers, live scores, and more in the all-time, all-the-time desktop alert. Find it in the March Mayhem Score Center at cbs.sportsline.com. America Online users enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Coming up next, a look at freshman phenom Joseph Forte, for whom nothing could be finer than to be leading scorer in Carolina as the road to the Final Four continues live from New York. The Seattle Kingdome, a monument to March Madness. 1984, Houston Spy Slamma Jamma and Georgetown. The Lajuan and Ewing clash, and senior Fred Brown redeems himself for an errant pass in the final of two years earlier. 1989, Michigan against Seton Hall for the national championship. A controversial call with three seconds left in overtime put Ramil Robinson and the game on the line. Robinson hit two in the clutch. The Wolverines captured the big one. And then in 1995, it was a return to glory for UCLA. Freshman Toby Bailey nearly jumped through the dome's roof, and there was joy up and down the Pacific Coast. And just two and a half hours ago, this was the last inside view from that 24-year-old concrete structure. It took less than 20 seconds to blow the Seattle landmark from here to Kingdom Come. When all the dust settles, a new football stadium will be built there for the Seattle Seahawks. Meanwhile, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this is the Donald W. Reynolds Center. Capacity, 8,355. And in Tulsa, the fans are watching. Their guys play in Austin. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane will be taking on the North Carolina Tar Heels at stake. Only a trip to the Final Four in Indianapolis. Coming up, it's the South Regional Final, North Carolina against Tulsa. The trip to the Final Four, Dick Enberg and James Worthy set to call the action from Austin, Texas. We'll see you at the half. Enjoy the game, everyone, here on CBS.